Hi folks, so what I want to do is do a breakdown of the video that I posted during the week. Um, what, I'll, what I tend to do with these breakdowns is I let the video play first and then I go back and break down um, the video step by step. So I'll keep this as, as short as possible, but it's probably likely to be about 40 minutes or so. Okay, so um, the video is two and a half minutes long and uh, I'm just going to stop the share there actually. Okay. And there's a few things here. Um, the, the learning point I tried to make on during the week was what to do when uh, when awfully dogs come into your space when you're training with a, a dog that um, has reactivity and, and aggression problems. Okay. Um, this dog's a superstar. He's a really, really cool dog. He just gets, he's a little bit, um, something okay so um just things tend to go wrong when the dogs come in and l some of that is lead handling i've used this uh, video on my online course to demonstrate and um, try to keep the lead slack and what happens when we don't okay and i'll go through some of the reasons as to why uh what why the the woman and um, the female the, the sorry the human client doesn't um do that okay but i'll, I'll break all that down uh the there's a big difference um and uh, you, you'll see my why i'm kind of laughing in a second okay um there, there's a big difference between um training when it in conditions that are optimal and then managing when things go wrong all right so imagine we'd watched uh um a driving instructor taking somebody through advanced driving so they're already an experienced driver they're taking them through an advanced driving and the, the, the person skids the car and we watch the car skidding, that brief moment of the car skidding, and we make judgments about that driver instructor's ability to control a car and to instruct. Okay, it's just it's just mental. Okay, it's just nuts. Okay, so um, the the purpose of this video is to show what happens when it goes wrong, and then how to recover from it. When I I think it it does um it illustrates that really well, which is why I showed it. Um. The to date that video has been viewed about forty five thousand times, which for one of my posts is really really cool. Okay, that's a big um a big reach, um and it's reached about hundred thousand people. Okay, the post has reached hundred thousand people, and that's thanks to you for commenting and sharing and liking it. Okay, um, well over well over ninety five percent of the comments I got were um supportive i don't do this in order to get a big pat on the back check you john you're fantastic okay i do this to try and share information and um, but it is validating when a lot of people come around and say that um it's helped massively which is what it's for but again it's always those the the comments of the people that um don't like what you do don't like me um want to use corrections with their dog who object okay um, and some of the object to objections were that we didn't do, we didn't correct the dog, the uh, Romy, um, the Romanian dog, the shaggy dog, when he kicked off. Okay, and I, I just think it's insane um, to, to correct that dog. Um, okay, so let's watch the video first. Okay, there we go. Right, so play it, play it first, uh, and then I'll do a breakdown. Lovely. Okay, now swing round and have your back to these dogs. Yep. Treat down. Nice. The count. One. Lovely. Okay, lovely. Keep going. Nice. Now just keep putting the treat down. Okay. Lovely. Right, so put the treat down while he's eating it. Glance over your shoulder to see where those dogs are. Okay, so this wouldn't be the time to be putting them in the long lead. Relax your right arm. Keep putting the treat down. Okay, now it's going to go to his mouth. Wait till he looks at you. Treat his mouth. Perfect. Okay, nice and relaxed in your lead. Walk in, walk in, walk in. Relax. Nice fight. Okay, he's all right. Okay, start walking backwards. Walk backwards. Okay, just walk backwards. He's all right. It's okay. Nice shot in the lead up. You're doing fine. Shot in the lead up. Okay. You're doing fine. Okay. That's all right. It's okay. Start walking out. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. 
Good fight. Thank you for the lecture. All right. Thanks. Good. Everyone's just having a laugh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you just he's having a party. Okay. Nice. Well done. Good work. Okay. Start putting a treat down. Slow down. Stop. Put a treat down. Okay. How are you feeling? Okay. Relax. Okay. Put a treat down. Nice and relaxed. It's okay. Don't don't give him a hard time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep putting the treat down. On you go. Just being an adult boy. It's okay. Okay, keep going. Nice. Nice and relaxed. Well done. Okay. Really nice work. Okay. Okay. Big deep breath into your belly. And another one. There we go. No, it's all right. You're doing fine. All right. Lovely. Okay. Stand, keep your feet dead still. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, what was, I'm not going to go into all the criticisms, but it's just to cover them. Okay. Um, if you're watching this video, uh, I'm, this is about education. I'm not, um, I have zero interest in discussing these things online with people anymore. I mean, and I mean zero, absolutely none. Okay. I, I've, um, the, the time for discussion with people um, is when you're sitting after uh, a seminar or conference where you sit down and have a coffee with somebody and you can go through um, various aspects of training and you can actually have a dialogue about it. And Facebook doesn't facilitate that. Um, I don't do it. I don't spend my time doing it. I put information out there. I don't allow it on my page. That's the way it is. Okay. So some of the criticisms that I've had um, were... Uh, the food on the ground, okay, so we're uh, rewarding a dog for bad behaviour. We're not rewarding the dog for bad behaviour uh, because the reason why uh, the Romy is Romy is lunging and barking at Edwin is not because he wants food. So providing food afterwards isn't reinforcing any of those things, okay. We've also got, there's been a big time gap, and it is a fairly substantial time gap, 10, 15 seconds at least, from when Romy stops barking to we start delivering the food, okay? So that, that I, so there, there's, there's so little chance that he will make the link between lunging and barking and getting the food based on the time there, okay? Um, one of the uh, criticisms that came up was uh, I didn't intervene, okay? So, well, I did intervene because you can see my hand on the client moving them in the right direction. Um, so there was um, not inter. I, I didn't intervene enough. I should because I was too busy, busy, busy recording. I can record and move at the same time. Okay, I, I'm fairly physically uh, adept. Um, and uh, yeah, and if it had gone, I have done it before. I've put the camera away and I have intervened by taking a hold of the lead. Um, the um, human client was doing fantastically well with my assistance. And uh, I I wasn't I didn't need to um, further uh, intervene there. Okay. Another criticism was <laughs> that I shouldn't have put my hands on her. Okay. It was going wrong there. I've got a responsibility to the dog, to the woman, to her mum, to Edwin, to Edwin's owner, and to the golden other golden retriever. Okay. I have a responsibility, a professional responsibility. I've also got a civic responsibility to intervene. So it was perfectly appropriate for me to put my hand on the woman's shoulder or back and guide her the way that I wanted her to guide. Uh, so the way, the way, the way that I, I wanted her to move. Okay. And that, and the other point there was, uh, my clients generally tend to work with me for three sessions, okay? And a lot of that is to do with um, affordability. Uh, people have got costs um, and um, taking a, a chunk of their salary to work in the dog training um, or to, to spend on dog training is, is substantial, okay? And I try and give people the best, the, the best um, value during those hours that I've got with them. So I try, I have to teach them um, observation skills, how to manage the lead, um, how to start reinforcing the, the behaviours that the dog wants, how to emotionally regulate, regu emotionally regulate themselves, okay, and recognise that in their dog as well, 
okay, and equip them for what happens if, all right? And um, that's a big ask and we do our best, all right? So um, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and in optimal ideal conditions, that wouldn't have happened. But you heard the, the, the human client saying there, I'm used to it. Okay, she is used to dogs running into her space when she's out with the, with her dog. And one of the things that I'm trying to equip her on is one, don't put your dog there in the first place if you can avoid it. Okay, and it's if you can avoid it because we can't avoid everything. The same way as going back to that analogy of the car skidding, um, we you could be the best driver in the world, your car might still skid because of road conditions, just because, because sometimes accidents are actually accidents, okay, and nobody's at fault. So equipping her for what do we do if, and then teaching her as my clients as best as we can, let's not try and get into those uh, scenarios in the first place. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get our, um, our uh, breakdown done. Okay. All right, so if you've not already, I'll, I'll, I'll put the links up for these video um, courses um, in the, the description, and I'll offer some discount codes uh, for this weekend as well. So a couple of things that we want to look um, the courses that are uh, applicable here, um, the Triangle of Trust, which encompasses most of the stuff, okay, so aggression and reactivity, bulletproof focus, or the focus game, recall and lead handling, and loose lead walking, so they're all in that bundle. I'll put a link to the aggression course on its own, um, and we've also got the bulletproof focus or the focus game. So I'm starting here. We're trying to get this dog onto a long line. Um, the history with this dog is he lunges and barks at other dogs. All right, he lunges and barks at other dogs. He does not bite other dogs. There is no known bite history from this dog. Um, he gets into skirmishes with other dogs and he's not injured and the other dogs aren't injured and the humans aren't injured. So we now know we can make a fairly accurate assessment that this dog is relatively as safe as we can assess that dog to be. Okay. Um, and again, depending or not again, depending on how risk averse you are, will determine what decisions that you make. Um, with you, uh, with your dog, and around other people. Okay, some people are really risk averse, and um, some people are not risk averse. And um, I tend to be, I am not risk averse, uh, but they're calculated risks. Okay, and calculated risks come if they're not reckless. They come from assessing the situation there versus the situation versus the skill set I have, and we're looking to increase. Um, uh, skills okay so we're aiming here at this part of the lesson to get the dog on a long line and to get some play done with them so we can get them off and running use the ball and tug as a reinforcer and work them around the other dogs so that we're taking the um the restriction of a, a two meter or a six foot lead out of play so I ask her to start playing the focus game um, if you're interested in the focus game, I'll put the link there below. I can't answer questions on the ins and outs of the focus game. Okay, it'll be will be here too long. Okay, lovely. Okay, now swing round and have your back to these dogs. Yep, treat down. Okay, so I've asked her um to uh, have her back to the dog. Okay, now ten what tends to happen if we are looking here? So imagine um these dogs in the corner here, uh, the dog walking down in the corner with this couple. Um, imagine that's the, the dog that we're, we are concerned is going to come into our space. When we are facing the dog, we can see. Okay, we just see this here. It, it just happens. Okay, it happens here perfectly. Um, Romy perfectly um, illustrates this. Okay. Um, if you're in front of me, I can see you. If my dog is now in front of me facing me, he can't see you because he's got his back to you. So one of the things I'll do is ask the person to turn around and stand either with their back to the dog or at an angle so that they can glance up and see the person coming with the, their dog and their dog in front of them. And so the dog can see the other dog. So I want Romy to be able to see these other dogs. Um, we've got, um, so it's a mother and, and daughter um, uh, clients here. So uh, mum's looking this way towards me. I move round so that I can see the dogs coming in from the right-hand side or see them moving past, which is what I thought was going to happen. Um, 
and we've covered all of those fields of view. When you're out with your on your own, you will not be able to cover all of them. And so you position yourself as best as you can. So really, I can't see behind me here, but I can see over this side. And I can see over this side by moving here, gentle glances left and right. And if the person, the, the dog is coming in this way, if my dog is sitting here, he can easily see the dog, which is what we're looking for here. Okay. So he, she turned around and relatively untrained dog just now. Okay. So um, we're working on building some uh, focus skills. So he takes off. Nice. Okay. One. Okay. Nice. And then he comes back to her. Okay, so all good. So he's starting to recognise what this game is. I pan round to see where the two goldens are. And then move round. Okay, so a wee bit obvious there, okay, what I've asked her to do is put the treat down and while he's eating it, glance over her shoulder, okay, but we're getting, and again, let's call this woman Sarah, Um, she's learning how to do this as well, okay, so we want nice, easy, subtle movements, she puts the treat down, glances over her shoulder and back to him, but we've got this big full body turn, um, which gives Romy more information about those dogs than... I would kind of like because they're able to follow what we're looking at and what we're pointing at. But she does well by coming back round towards him quickly. Now, the other thing, uh, I've got a few thoughts going on here, so apologies. This is two and a half minutes long. And when I posted the video the other day, every single person watching that has got the luxury of watching that multiple times, pausing it, rewinding it, freeze framing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is happening in real time. And trying to make decisions, trying to learn under pressure in real time is extremely challenging, if not almost impossible. Okay, it's a real skill set um, for us to develop. And um, it happens, being able to make decisions in real time, make assessments quickly in real time, that takes practice. Okay, so I've been doing this for 17 years, working with these types of dogs in real life settings. I was a police officer for 18 years beforehand. All my police service was operational. Okay. It was it was on you know, this the front line. Okay. It was public facing, okay, or out dealing with criminality, my whole service, okay, for 18 years. Um, and then I was a, a special uh, constable for five years prior to that. Okay. So um I've got a lot of experience doing this, okay, of making these decisions, okay, that um, blink, split second decisions, okay, so thin slice and stuff. I get it right most of the time. I don't get it right all of the time. Now, what we see here, you'll see this. This is the, the um, Edwin that comes in here. There's a, a second when he moves around. Dad's walking away with him, and Edwin stops and looks at us. Now, again, we have the luxury of watching this over and over and over again to notice that. But that detail, that which happens in less than three or four seconds, can easily be missed, especially when we're dealing with everything else that's going on in the park. Okay, so let's rewind that a wee bit. Well, we need to glance over your shoulder to see where those dogs are. Okay, so this wouldn't be the time to be putting them in the long lead. Relax your right arm. Keep putting the treat down. Okay. Now. Okay. So I'm asking her to keep putting the treat down to get um, Romy focused. And it's just here, you'll see uh, Edwin appearing over uh, Sarah's right shoulder and he stops and looks and that's when he's making the decision whether it, what about what he's going to do, okay? Now, and I know I'm going, I'm taking little tangents here. I said in the blurb um, that, uh, oh, sorry, you, you hear me saying in this video, it's okay, don't worry about this, it's okay. I will say this just now, there is nothing that's okay about... Um, Edwin coming into our space. There's nothing that's okay about it. Um, having a dog in a public space it means that we have to have control over that dog, and it's and it's so that instances like this don't happen. One of the things that I will say is, can we reasonably expect X, Y, and Z? Okay, so if I am walk working with a dog like this, and we are walking far away. And we're not too bad here, but at, uh, until this moment, there was nothing for me to suggest otherwise. 
if I'm walk, working with that dog 100 metres away, I can reasonably expect that people keep their dogs away from me if I'm walking if I'm working 100 metres away. If we're walking up the path, you see the woman in the red jacket at the back, if I'm walking, sorry, if she is walking up that path, she ha can have a reasonable expectation that her, the little Westie, will not be lunged on, uh, lunged or barked at by another dog. Okay, that's that's reasonable. So is it reasonable for me to expect under these conditions um, other people's behaviour? Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. All right. Now, reasonable expectation. You can see uh, Edwin's dad pointing this way. Okay, and you'll see Edwin in a second. He's going to go to his mouth. Wait till he looks at you. Treated. That's them. That's him <laughs> there, right? So that's when he makes the decision. So he's thinking about it, okay, uh, about whether he's going to come in. So I'll go back. Okay, now he's going to go to his mouth. Wait till he looks at you. Treat his mouth. Yeah. Okay, and that happens in a space of less than a second and a half that Edwin sees us and makes the decision to come in and say hi, okay? Now, this is where it starts. Well, it's all interesting. When I use this with my own students, I used it with another in conjunction with another video um, or where we did move in, which I'll break down in a second. Okay. Um the lead, our lead handling causes a lot of these problems. Okay. I almost think it's like everything's already loaded and our tension on that lead causes the gun to fire, okay, or or, or the, the the spark to ignite. Everything's already loaded and it's the, the conditions are perfect for it to go wrong. And as pulling back in the lead causes it. The reason why we pull back in the lead, the reason why Sarah's pulling back in the lead here is because she's concerned that Edwin is going to um, bite or make a big aggression, aggressive explosion and or she's going to get pulled off her feet and on and on and on. She's going to get embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things here and we're holding that lead back Please don't let it happen. Please don't let it happen. Okay. And we've done that over and over again. So Edwin starts understand. Sorry, uh, Romy starts understanding when another dog comes into our space, tension and lead. And my decision is to have a lunge and bark. Okay. So. Okay. Nice and relaxed. Walk in, walk in, walk in. Relax. Okay. So you hear me saying there, walk in. And I'm, I'm looking for her to walk in so that the dogs meet each other. Okay, and to take all this tension out of the lead. Okay, so um, on leash greetings are fine. On lead greetings are fine as long as there's no tension in the lead. Okay, and then if we're worried about uh, the dogs kicking off, we keep moving and we move away from the other dog and the person so that we're ready to take the dog towards the exit. Okay, so this lead is tight the whole time here now. Okay, um, and uh. Yeah, and it, it's no, it's gone wrong at this point. Okay, it started to go wrong, and we see it in just a few seconds here. Where if she'd have walked in, it might have been different. Now we don't know. All right, we don't know, but it might have been. And in my experience, it often is. Walk in, walk in, walk in, relax. So she should have walked in here. Okay, that's where she should have walked in. So um, Romy has, has stopped lunging and barking, and this would have been a perfect opportunity to walk in and see if we get an, a, a decent uh, greeting between the two of them with no tension in the lead. But we hold the lead, she holds the lead back here, and again, no blame, no shame. Sarah's learning how to do this, and that's what she's paying for. Okay. All right. They okay, start walking backwards. Walk backwards. Okay, just walk backwards. He's all right, it's okay. Nice shot, Okay, now, I'm asking her to walk backwards, okay, because walking backwards keeps your body strong. If you're, the lead is in this hand and your hand is pulled across here, your body's strong because your body is against your arm. When you're, just try this just now, move your arm, arm here and try and pull it round further, okay? Your arm can only go so far back. And what will happen is you'll start spinning. You'll get pulled around this way. Whereas if you're going here and you drive forward, you won't because you're using your body against your arm. Okay. So it's understanding how our um, body mechanics work. Okay. So there's a little bit of running around. She does, Sarah does a great job of keeping them as under control as possible. And again, 
not training at this point, okay, we're managing a bad situation. And the reason why I have to keep reiterating it is because this is public on Facebook and uh, people are awesome about taking a two second sound bite and completely misrepresenting what you said, okay? Okay, now what we get nice there, okay, is we get a brief moment from Romy where he is not lunging and barking and chasing Edwin. So we'll just watch it just there. Okay, so it's going wrong at this point, okay? Going wrong, it has gone wrong. So I'm asking her to shorten the lead up, okay? And that's contrary to what I've just said, yep. We give the lead when we're looking for good exchanges and we take the lead when we're looking to shut down that exchange and move, okay? And that's the, bit, the big difference that, uh, so the big thing that lots of people don't, um, they stand still holding a dog on a short lead as the dog's lunging and barking. And I get why people do it. They're doing it because most of the time they're worried or apprehensive that they're going to get pulled off balance. Okay. And Romy's a big dog. I mean, he's he's 25 kilos easily or 30 kilos easily. Okay. His coat makes him look bigger, but he's a he's a substantial dog. Okay. So Edwin's dad chases Edwin off, and then this dopey guy comes comes in and he gets a shout at as well. Okay. Now what we've also got here is that um, Romy could have bitten either of these dogs, all right, and is choosing not to, all right. So it's not Sarah's handling skills that are stopping the bite from taking place, and Edwin is keeping himself away. So if you if the the fight wanted if the bites were wanting were going to happen, they would have happened. Okay. So here's a shout again here. Okay, Edwin's circling, trying to keep away from dad. Okay, and I'll cover in a second um, my response to um, Edwin's uh, human, and I'm asking her to walk into this space here. Right. Another shout at Edwin. Okay, right. okay. now my hand. I, I, I try and reassure her. She's doing fine. Okay, she's doing well. She's doing well in a, in a circumstance. Car's crashed at this point or is crashing, skidding out of control. My hand here, not really for reassurance. Okay, and that's what the words are for. I am keeping her moving. Okay, um, so I'm a relatively substantial human. Okay, <laughs> physically, uh, I weigh about 90 kilos. Okay, and I, a body in motion stays in motion. I don't want her stopping here. I don't want her stopping. I want the weight of both of us behind that lead to keep Romy moving where we want him to go, okay? We're not stopping. We are moving at this point, okay? And that's what the hand's there for. Keep us moving, keep us moving. So this is the physical intervention that was suggested that I hadn't done. Okay, Edwin comes back in. Okay, you hear me saying there, Edwin's having a laugh, which is why <laughs> he's having a party. Nobody else is there. A party. Okay, nice, well done, good work. Okay, so that's been a treat. Then. Okay, right. So now let's go. That's a minute thirty-five. Let's go back to where it starts. Okay, all right. Okay, so it starts round about. Nice and relaxing. Yeah, okay. So that's 50 seconds that incident lasts. Okay, nice. Well done. Okay. That incident lasts for 50 seconds. All right. How quickly can we recover from it? How quickly can Romy recover from it? How quickly can Edwin and his dad recover from it? Okay. It is a moment in time. It is 50 seconds. All right. Now I get it. That's how life works, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I always remember the the Baz uh, Baz Lerman um song, Everybody Wears Sunscreen. And one of the lines in it is the things that broadside you on an idle Tuesday afternoon. Okay. So those are the things that are life-changing moments. All right. A moment in time. This is not one of them. <laughs> it's just not one of these moments in time. We can make it that way, but it's not. Okay. So we bring him back out there and basically what we want to say to him is, 
let's get back on the horse. Let's get back into playing the focus game. Let's shed that. Let's concentrate on what we're doing here. Yep, I get that there's still some stuff going on here, but let's get back here. Hey, remember we're doing this? Remember we're doing this? Do you remember that we're doing this? Oh, yeah, I remember we're doing this. Awesome. Let's continue to do this. Good work. Okay, start putting the tree down. Go down, stop. Put the tree down. Okay, how are you feeling? Okay, relax. Okay, put the tree down. Nice and relax. It's okay, don't, don't give them a hard time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep putting the tree down. On you. Okay, now, I covered this in the original post when I said to Edwin's guardian, don't give him a hard time. Okay. This is something that I had to work long and hard on, all right? Um, I have been a hothead my entire adult life, certainly, and probably started from um, pre-adolescence, okay, where I was prone to um, being angry. Serves no purpose, okay? Well, sorry, it doesn't serve no purpose. We have evolved anger for a reason in order to take action. That's what it's for, okay? We get angry about something, we take action in order to change it, but it, it is supposed to be in healthy emotionally healthy individuals something which is there momentarily and then we let it go all right and it's important that we do let it go as i said the, the, the earlier on in this lesson none of this is fine okay it is not fine that edwin came in and and, and um wasn't under control by his human okay it is not fine but if we start shouting at that guy there, get your dog under control and what do you think you're doing and blah, blah, blah. His response, one, I bet you Edwin's an awesome dog, okay? He's just young and needs some training, okay? He wants to then start defending that Edwin's a good dog, okay? And then what will happen is he'll start lashing out at us. This is your fault, okay? You shouldn't have a dog like that at the park. And the effing and the blinding starts and all the rest of it, okay? So that's if we get backlash towards us. Now what happens is we start becoming defensive or we start, we've already been starting shouting at Edwin's dad and Romy starts going, things got weird there, okay? And things start getting weird when other dogs come in, all right? Everything is fine. Other dogs come in. Human acts like a mental case at the end of the lead, starts screaming and bawling. And when the dog goes away, everything goes back to being normal. And the dog goes, I know how to get other I know how to get other dogs away. I lunge and bark at them. And when I lunge and bark at them, they go away and everything goes back to being normal. Okay. So it's classical conditioning in a real environment at its finest. And that's why one of the reasons why we don't do it. Okay. The second reason why we don't do it is I don't want Edwin getting a hard time. Okay. One of the things that I will try and do through my whole life is I'd be nice to dogs and I'd be nice to children, okay? I'm working on it with adults, <laughs> right? Um, but that's that's what I will do, okay? As a very brief aside there, I try and enjoy um, innocent moments from children and from dogs when they come into my life, okay? And it's in order to fill my heart, all right? So last year, I remember walking around during the summer, I was walking around, <laughs> through the busy um, shopping street nearby. And there was a bunch of kids uh, who um, were walking past and the, a group of boys and they were about nine or 10 years old. And one of them had a pair of um, flippers, swim fins on his feet, big rigid plastic flippers or swim fins and was slapping them across the road, okay? And his pals were howling, laughing. And I just started laughing and enjoyed it. And he gave me this big smile because that was funny, okay? Uh, when I see a dog, I saw a young dog today. Um, I was at the, the cash machine, the ATM, and a dog walked past this lovely spaniel, looked up at me, smiled, wagged his tail, and I said, hi, pal, and he walked on, okay? So those willing, willingly engaging with those moments, okay? So that's the flip side of this, all right? I don't want Edwin getting a hard time because his dad's embarrassed, um, or feel shame because he's not got his dog under control because Edwin will very often, very often will pay the uh, the price for that because he'll now start being grabbed, pulled and hauled, okay, shouted at, and Edwin pays the price for us not able to control our emotions and our temper, 
Okay, so that's a big part of why I'm saying to that guy, no, it's not okay. Sorry, it is okay, don't worry about it, it's fine. Just move on with your day, it happened. Nobody died there, nobody died, nobody was in the hospital. We've just had a dog lunging and barking, okay? Cool, moving on. Just being an adult boy, it's okay. Okay, keep going. Okay, now, interesting here, okay? Mum starts bringing in the lead, okay? We can just leave that and we can go back. All right, this happens and it's fine, okay, because mum's there to, to kind of pick up after, all right. Um, Sarah's mum. Um, but that the lead is not important. We can always go back for it. And what often happens is that if you're dealing with this in your own, you start thinking, because that lead is not, it, it's relatively expensive, that lead has uh, uh, spent a, a decent bit of money, money on it because it's of good quality. It's just stuff. Okay, and I get that stuff is important and it costs money and money is important because most of us don't have enough or would like more. Um, but I can always go back for that and I can go back for 10 or 15 minutes later. In most places, it will still be there. So if you're out on your own doing this and you oh, I've left a piece of kit there, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's not worth your safety, Romy's safety, or the safety of the other dogs. Okay. Mm. Logan's coughing in the background. Okay, so just a little aside there. But it's all these details to think of. Okay, and it just comes through experience. Nice. Nice and relaxed. Well done. Okay, really nice work. Okay. Okay, now what I'd ask here is, has this dog recovered from that? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Well, he's certainly well on his way to recovering, okay? He's not bothered about this dog here. He's not bothered about the dog in the background, the uh, Weimaraner, all right? Um, he's fully engaged with mum. His tail's wagging, okay? Um, yep, he looks nice nice and relaxed and happy. It's just something that happened, okay? Um, I don't think we get a shake-off here. That might happen after we've switched the video off, okay? So just let it go. He's back in the room. He's living in the present. We don't want to be holding on to what's just happened in the previous two minutes. Okay, big deep breath into your belly. Another one. There we go. One. Okay, now, I'm going to try. I don't think my jaw will uh, crack here. Yes, it did. There we go. Okay, so big crack in that side. I don't know if the microphone will have picked it up. Um. This is where I'll hold my tension, hold my tension in my jaw. I hold it in my diaphragm. That's a new one on me, which I'm going to have to do some work on. Um, we hold our breath. We pull our muscles in. We store tension. I want to try and let that go. Okay. So some of the people who are commented on this said that, that yes, they had been holding their breath through this whole video. Okay. So that's tension because this, this, a, this is a tense situation. Okay, it just is. It's fine. No judgment on it. It's it's just tense. So let's try and get rid of that tension. And you feel where the tension's sitting. So right now it's in my mid-back, round about the back of my ribs. Stomach's not too bad. Okay, but it's mainly, mainly across my back. So I start going, right, that's where I'm holding the tension right now. Okay. You heard it in my jaw. That's normal. Okay. <laughs> Just normal for me. So we're taking those big deep breaths in to release and relieve that tension. And the more that you practice breath work anyway in your life, not just to do with your dog, but it means that when we need to use it, our body is well practiced at responding to the breath, at those deliberate breaths. All right. You're doing fine. All right. Lovely. Okay. Just trying to keep it dead still. Okay. Okay. And then at the end there, I put a big dump of food down there. And it's so that um Romy can start to relax and he's got something to do while I debrief some of what was just ha has just happened. Okay. So that's the breakdown of that, okay? There's lots of stuff in that. You might have questions on it. The likelihood is that most of the questions will be answered in the online courses. Um, so I'll put discount courses up. Uh, so the, the Bulletproof Focus um, is, is as affordable as I can make it anyway. It's 13 pounds, which is about 15 or 16 US dollars. 
and um, I'll put some links up for the aggression and reactivity course um, and uh, the triangle of trust course, which is aggression, reactivity, bulletproof focus, recall and loose lead walking all packaged together in an affordable bundle. OK, and there's tons, tons and tons and tons of breakdowns of videos like that. So I, I real life situations and I break down what's happened, what the learning points are as well as illustrate the other points and going through some of the theory of it. So massive thanks for your, um, if you're still with me, okay, huge thanks for your uh, uh, for watching this video um, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.